Hey guys, welcome to the Little Health. Let's check out this uh, video called It's a New Napoleon video, okay? And um, this thing is actually really big. This video is like 33 minutes long, so <laughs> my, my reaction is gonna be like, what, 50 minutes or something? I don't know. Uh, but, um, you know, let's just take a look at this and, uh, you know, I'm kind of getting tired of the French losing over and over again. I didn't expect this. I thought it was gonna be at least like, um, you know, simple and I mean, at least like normal and, and you know, like, like the domination of the French is always gonna be visible. That's what I thought, but no, they they keep failing. <laughs> it's like, it's like, why? <laughs> okay, L the last time this dude called Wellington comes out of nowhere and then starts, uh, like basically makes the French run for their lives. Okay, basically <laughs> never before the French have run, you know, Run, like run across the fields to save their lives never but uh, the previous video they did and it was like so bad okay but uh, today we're going to take a look at this uh, napoleon video it's called napoleon 1813 battle of the nations oh my god battle of the nations bro i don't know about this i don't know what to what to say i don't know <laughs> um battle of the nations because like you know after like this is Na napoleon's uh, war in Russia, I, I, I think. I could be wrong. Um, that's where that he was in Leipzig and that, that place was like a planet of warfare. Like a planet warfare because you couldn't see any patch of grass in the, in the open landscape. You couldn't see not even a single patch of grass that was not covered with people fighting. Okay, so that's what happened in the end. So I guess they're going to resume that and continue and tell us what the hell happened there okay or maybe something else happened i don't know okay so let's get into it okay three two one let's go napoleon 1813 battle of the nations and yeah let's go let's go and before we start off please make sure to uh, subscribe to this channel okay um and also like tomorrow's like the weekend so i won't be able to upload any videos but um you know um that's why i'm reacting to a lot of videos today so that you can watch um throughout the weekend okay let's do it okay three two one let's go uh let's do it starting with the coat what is this oh napoleon okay between a battle lost and a battle won the distance is immense and there stands empires i know it's a big ass battle napoleon bonaparte october 1813 dang uh, let's go, man. What is he doing? Because last time in Spain, Wellington was kicking the French's ass, and uh, Napoleon was nowhere to be seen because he's in Russia. Un like, like, come on, when shit is happening in Spain, you're going to Russia. What's going on, man? <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> October 1813. Hmm. Napoleon Bonaparte faced his greatest crisis since becoming Emperor of the French nine years yeah. before. Yeah, pretty much after all those like hundreds of thousands of troops dying and horses dying, like how can he even, like that has to be the greatest fucking challenge that basically wasn't even a challenge. He got like, like he took an L basically. That's what happened, okay? <laughs> his long war in Spain had ended in defeat and an Anglo-Spanish-Portuguese army. Yeah. Wellington kicked their asses. <laughs> and Joseph Bonaparte could never be, uh, can never rule another place after that, after all that, okay? So... <laughs> now crossed the Pyrenees to invade France itself. France itself. In Germany, the Kingdom of Bavaria had switched sides and hmm. joined the Sixth Coalition against France. Huh. While in Saxony, Napoleon faced four armies converging on him from all directions. Oh shit! That's dangerous. What's more, these were not the same bunglers he'd crushed in 1805 and 6, oh. at Austerlitz and Jena. Hmm. Prussia, Austria and Russia had all learned from their mistakes. Hmm. They were now better organized, trained and led, and oh. more wary of Napoleon. Okay. Damn. Wow! The largest coalition force was the Army of Bohemia, commanded oh. by Austrian Field Marshal, the Prince of Schwarzenberg. Oh shit! His was a huge mixed Austrian-Russian-Prussian army, 
Wow. 94,000 men and 790 <laughs> guns. It's like mixed race attack. <laughs> That's what's happening here. Okay, 194,000 men and 790 guns. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's the numbers Napoleon carries whenever he goes into wars. That's a lot of people. I mean, Rick's, uh, like mixed race, man. What do you expect? You know, shitload of people. <laughs> Dang. To the north. Some people might even hate each other because different races, you know. Blücher's hey. army of Silesia hmm. and the army of the north under Napoleon's ex-marshal Bernadotte, huh. now Crown Prince of Sweden. Oh, this, this dangerous dude Blücher is still there. Of course he is. He's dangerous. <laughs> Together, 130,000 men hmm. and 536 guns. Huh, decent. Decent amount. To the amount. southeast, General Benningsen's army of Poland hmm. besieging Dresden. Huh. Another 34,000 men 34, with 135 men. guns. 135 guns, okay. Cool. In total, the coalition had fielded 360,000 men oh. and 1,500 guns. Oh with Russia shit! Russia supplying the bulk of the troops. Oh, the Sweden is getting crushed. What the hell? <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> One unique addition to Bernadotte's Army of the North hmm. was a single troop of British rocket artillery, huh. an experimental weapon system based on the Congreve rocket, a type hmm. seen here in 1830. Huh. Although wildly inaccurate, their high explosive warhead hmm. could be devastating at close oh. range. Shit. Oh! Napoleon's <laughs> forces around Leipzig were outnumbered okay. almost two to one. Oh my god. But with 200,000 men... Napoleon is having the worst time in his life. I, I can't think of anything coming that is worse than this. This is the worst time in his life, bro. And I don't know if he can even pull through all of this. He will probably pull through all of this, but he's gonna lose more troops. And I... <laughs> I hope, I hope not, I hope not, you know? Men and Jeez. 700 guns, the Grande Armée was still a force to be reckoned with. Oh, 200,000 men and 700 guns by Napoleon. Good job, that's, that's his size. And I would say he needs more because he, he's used to having more than that, like seriously. With many experienced troops and commanders, huh. even though it increasingly relied on young conscripts to huh. make up numbers. Okay. There were another 140,000 men that Napoleon could not call on. Huh. General Rapp's 10th Corps besieged in Danzig. Huh. Marshal Saint-Cyr's 1st Corps besieged in Dresden. Dresden, okay. Marshal Davout's 13th Corps holding mm. Hamburg. Wow. As well as several smaller besieged garrisons across Germany oh, and Poland. Oh, shit! Oh, man. Okay. Napoleon was currently about 20 miles north of Leipzig with mm. the bulk of his army. Okay. Marshal Murat was 40 miles to the south with 90,000 oh. men covering Schwarzenberg. Okay, okay. Napoleon. There seems to be a little bit of planning. I like that. Who decided to rapidly join Murat. Huh. And with their temporary superiority in numbers, hmm. defeat Schwarzenberg before oh. Bernadotte and Blücher could intervene. Oh, Murat that's good. Murat had orders to conduct a fighting withdrawal northwards. Oh, shit! But at Liebert Volkwitz, he was drawn into major combat with the enemy's advance guard. Oh, Schwarzenberg doesn't have any chance here. You got even Napoleon right there. I don't think he's gonna make it. He might as well retreat so far away uh, because he doesn't want... It's better because uh, Napoleon... He don't want Napoleon chasing him. That's what I, I mean, you know? Dang. Around 12,000 horsemen fought what some have described as the largest cavalry battle in Europe's history. 12,000! Murat, in the thick of it as usual, oh. was very nearly captured by oh, Prussian shit. dragoons. Oh no, the be careful! The battle ended in a minor coalition victory, okay. with around 2,000 casualties on each side. 2,000 casualties! The next day, Napoleon arrived to take command. Oh, okay. Fuck. This video is sponsored Dang. by The Great Courses Plus, home of more than 11,000 mm. on-demand video lectures, covering everything from science and maths to the natural world Curiosity Stream, is that what this is? The Great Courses Plus regularly the great updates courses. their content, so you could watch a documentary on coronavirus, 
or courses on infectious diseases or historical pandemics. The Black Death. But if you'd prefer a bit of escape, we can recommend the 24-part course, The High Middle Ages, exploring huh. every aspect of the medieval world, from feudalism to chivalry, heretics and crusades. Oh shit! And maybe just a bit of plague. Dang, That's more son. than 12 hours of shared expertise. And the Great oh. Courses Plus have more than 100 courses on history alone. Each mm. course is hosted by a qualified expert from a top university or institution, such as Whoa. the Smithsonian. Plus, you get to watch whenever you like, wherever you have your computer, tablet or phone. That's insane! Support like our that. channel and get access to a ton of great educational content by registering for a free trial at thegreatcoursesplus.com slash epichistorytv or mm. click on the link in the video description. Thank you to The Great Courses Plus for sponsoring this video. Okay, wow! But I'm never gonna get that shit because I'm not American and I don't have the currency. I don't have the, uh, you know, I, I'll never be able to afford that shit. So, all right, let's go. If you if you like it, go check it out. I, I think that's fucking awesome. I would love to, you know, take a look at that, but I don't have it, so whatever. Let's go. What is this? Okay. All right, children, today's France last day. Uh, tonight we must have won uh, must have won or all be dead. Oh shit! <laughs> General Maison uh, to the 16th Division, Leipzig, 16th October. Dang, son. Yeah, this is the last day, at least for them. Holy shit! Yeah, we must win or all we'll all be dead. Battle of Leipzig, day one. So, when they said Battle of Leipzig, they didn't show anything really about Leipzig until the end where it actually began. And this is the this is where it's gonna start day one, man. So expect fucking death, blood, gushing uh, on onto faces of every other troop and and fucking gory mess. Okay, holy shit, let's go. <laughs> By the 16th of October, Napoleon had concentrated most of his forces south of Leipzig. Okay. Field okay. Marshal Schwarzenberg, meanwhile, against hmm. Russian advice, had deployed his army on either side of the Pleiser River, hmm. which would hinder his movements throughout the battle. Oh, shit! Napoleon had entrusted the northern sector to Marshal Ney, huh. with orders to keep an eye out for Blücher and Bernadotte. But yeah. Napoleon didn't expect them for at least another day. Hmm. And so Ney had orders to transfer most of his troops south for the attack oh. on Schwarzenberg. Okay. Schwarzenberg, however, knew that... Bl he didn't expect them to be there, but they will be there before... Holy shit, I, I hope nothing terrible happens, you know. Bucher and Bernadotte were closer than Napoleon suspected. Hmm. And that Bennigsen was also marching up from Dresden. Oh, God. This was Holy the moment shit. the coalition had been waiting for. You're surrounded by all the enemies, and they're coming from five, six ways, and you have nowhere to escape. You better put up with this, Napoleon. You better win, you know? Dang. All their armies converging on Napoleon, hmm. with overwhelming superiority in numbers. Hmm. However, the coalition's headquarters were nothing like Napoleon's. Hmm. where one man's will decided all. Okay. Schwarzenberg had to attempt to coordinate the actions of three large armies from huh. three separate states. Oh. And although he was commander-in-chief, his plans still needed to be approved by Emperor Alexander, the supreme commander. Huh. Whilst he also managed relations with the King of Prussia oh. and the Emperor of Austria, That's all of whom cool. were present at his headquarters. That's cool. The plan finally agreed was hmm. for General Wittgenstein's core group to lead an attack in four main columns. With two I don't think they have that much of a chance. Look at Napoleon's army. That looks fucking massive. They're covering a the big land and I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> they, they also got like mixed race troops and I don't know what to say. It's, it's ridiculous. All right, let's go. Two Austrian flanking attacks west of the Pleiser. Hmm. They might have a chance considering if they know how to play strategy well. Uh, uh, if they couldn't, then it's it's gonna be it's gonna be trash. Okay. 
At 8am, a bombardment began along the line, as Russian, Austrian and Prussian infantry regiments advanced across cold, muddy fields. Oh God! Cold and muddy fields! I hope they don't slip and, uh, you know, get stuck in there, you know? Wachau soon fell to Russian infantry, hmm. but French artillery fire made it impossible for them to advance further. Oh God! Victor's second corps <laughs> then counterattacked, retaking the village at bayonet point. Oh shit! They lost like the first line of troops. Oh my God! <laughs> Wachau would change hands twice more that morning. Huh. These bloody contests for small Saxon villages would come to typify the fighting around Leipzig. Hmm. At Markleberg, Kleist's Prussian 2nd Corps drove out the Polish defenders after bitter fighting. Huh. While on the left bank of the Pleiser, Merveldt's Austrian 2nd Corps struggled across broken ground to attack well-defended villages. Oh shit! Their assault on Konowitz stalled. But with heavy losses, the Austrians got a toehold in Derlitz. Oh man! Wow! <laughs> On the right flank, around 10 a.m., Klenau's 4th mm. Corps occupied the high ground of the Kolmberg. Okay. And fought its way into Liebervolkwitz. Jeez. These people have no fear at all. They will <laughs> knowingly tackle Napoleon. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Dude, um... I don't know about uh, directly attacking him, like uh, do some flanking or something. Like I don't think they're gonna, su uh, you know, survive this. But we'll see. Maybe they are like even more dangerous, like Wellington. Who knows? Dang. Napoleon, observing from Gallows Hill, huh. ordered up Augereau's Ninth Corps hmm. and the Young Guard in support. Huh. Macdonald's Eleventh Corps was now also arriving in position on his left. Huh. Okay. Wow! His so he's, Napoleon is basically not uh, surrendering, ba basically not letting them anywhere even close to them. Because after all this, after all that in the previous videos, after all those, uh, you know, m fucking hundreds and thousands of pe troops dying, he's not gonna take any more shit anymore, okay? <laughs> he's gonna fight back and he's gonna fucking make people run. That's, at least that's what he wants, you know? That's good. And I hope he succeeds, I hope. Troops retook the Kolmberg mm. and counterattacked Liebert Wolkwitz, driving out the Austrians and pursuing <laughs> them over the fields beyond. Dang, look at them run! The advance was only halted when Russian Cossacks were sighted on their open left flank. Huh. A warning that Bennigsen's army was not far off. Oh shit, okay. The coalition offensive was going nowhere, with oh. most of its modest gains lost to French counterattacks. <laughs> like I said, that it's not you're not gonna be able to take down Napoleon and his French army. You can't, man. That dude is tough as shit. He's like like that stone wall. You know, and, and you cannot break it. You have to cross it, do something else, you know. You gotta, I guess you gotta do some flanking maybe. Unexpected, like sideways attacks and shit like that. Maybe that will work. Do some flanking, you know. But it's a big ass, big, large ground battles. And it's, it's not gonna be easy, you know. Wow. But there was one sector where the coalition had more success that morning. Hmm. General Gulai's Austrian Third Corps with oh. orders to threaten Napoleon's line of retreat, advanced over marshy ground towards Lindenau. Oh God! They had to divert Bertrand's 4th Corps to reinforce the village and ensure the road to France was kept open. Oh man! Napoleon was waiting for Ney's reinforcements before launching his attack on Schwarzenberg. Oh. But now, 4th Corps was tied down at Lindenau. Huh. And there was more bad news from Ney. It, it's, it, it's not more of a battle, but more like stopping the enemy from, you know, hauling, just basically uh, coming after you and shit. Just, just stopping them. That's how it looks like. It doesn't even look like a battle. It, it looks more like, uh, oh shit, calm down. 
<laughs> it's almost like a fucking exchange, like a mutual conversation happening. Um, you know, because everything, everybody's stationary. They're not moving. And it's like, what the fuck? You know, um, otherwise people will be running around everywhere, you know. But whatever, you know, it's what it is. Blucher's <laughs> army of Silesia was approaching from the northwest. Oh, more troops! Marmol's 6th Corps had had to turn about to keep the Prussians at bay. Hmm. Heavy fighting broke out around Merkern, the village itself held by elite French Marines. It's almost like only artillery fires accepted uh, by not engaging in, in, in a fight, you know, like, uh, you know, like, like when, when all the troops come together and fight, that's not happening. It's just stationary artillery firing uh, stuff. I hope they got like uh, something to, uh, you know, protect themselves by, you know. I don't know what to say, this is crazy. Means. Jeez. While Dombrovsky's Polish division clung on to Vitrich under attack from an entire Russian corps. Wow. Fuck. This was a nasty surprise for Napoleon. The Blucher guy is also coming. <laughs> Dang. Napoleon, oh. who thought Blucher was still a day's march away. Yeah, don't as assume and expect, okay? Because it, it's gonna fucking bite your ass if you're gonna assume and, and expect them to come tomorrow or something. No, they're right behind you right now. <laughs> you gotta be very careful, okay? <laughs> but the old Prussian general, hearing cannon fire to the south, huh. had urged his men on and into the attack. Oh shit! Lucher intended to draw as many French troops onto himself as possible oh. to assist Schwarzenberg's army of Bohemia. Oh man, is that Blucher is a fucking crazy man. <laughs> he might be he might be 10 times more badass than Napoleon. You know, he, he looks intimidating. He looks crazy and he does some uh, fucked up shit every now and then. You know, he's, he's like evil. <laughs> Actions Dang. and the bloody fight for Merkern may just have saved the coalition from mm. defeat. Mm. Wow. Jeez! <laughs> okay, now all hell was let loose. It seemed impossible that there could be any space between the bullets and balls which rained onto us. Unknown Russian officer, Leipzig, 16th October. Okay, what he's saying is that now uh, everything is like a fucking mess. <laughs> it seemed impossible that there could be any space between the bullets and, and balls which uh, rained onto us, pretty much. Uh, now, like I said, when all the troops combine and fight, that's the mess right here and it's a fucking mess dude don't a ball a fucking uh, cannonball might fall onto your head or a fucking uh shot uh like a like a like a bullet shot might have fucking gone right across your fucking forehead or something like that and you wouldn't even see it coming you know so it, it's all a mess you don't know what is happening the bullets are flying like flies are everywhere you know it's a mess look at this shit look at the background image that's exactly what's happening. Fuck. <laughs> Napoleon was outnumbered across the whole battlefield. Hmm. But in the south, he still had a numeric... He was outnumbered? Holy shit! Honestly, the enemy team doesn't, doesn't look like they have that much compared to the French guys. But apparently he's outnumbered. Uh, I guess I, I guess I gotta, like, think about the amount of troops they got. So, wow. Dang. advantage not as large as he'd hoped oh shit okay french army 177,000 coalition 200,000 napoleon 138,000 schwarzenberg 100,000 damn I, I gotta say that's um, kind of a challenge honestly nor likely to last long huh. schwarzenberg and alexander were already moving up reserves though schwarzenberg now found that his were on the wrong side of the pleiser river hmm. costing precious hours Hmm. It was now or never for Napoleon. Hmm. At 2 p.m., he ordered the attack to begin. Okay. A grand battery of 180 guns blasted the enemy lines. Oh shit! Napoleon the is not stopping anywhere. He's he wants to fucking uh, you know eviscerate the enemies. Basically, he's just trying his best. Wow. Then Victor's second corps, Lauriston's fifth corps, and the young guard began their advance. Hmm. In support, Murat gathered two entire cavalry corps, 10,000 horsemen, and okay. led them in one of the great mass cavalry charges of the Napoleonic Wars. Oh, ho, ho, ho. 
cavalry charges. Damn! Look at that! Cuirassiers of the 1st Heavy Cavalry Division broke through to the main enemy battery. Oh shit! Some even nearly reached the three coalition monarchs. Okay! But the ground was marshy and broken by fences and ditches. Man! The French horses were soon exhausted and the squadrons disordered. Oh god! Oh god! Austrian cuirassiers and Russian guard cavalry were coming up from the south. When these fresh Allied cavalry reserves charged the French, a oh, great man. melee ensued. But oh, the French shit. were eventually driven back to their start line. Oh man! No! Maison's division of the 5th Corps was involved in a desperate struggle for Golden Gossa. Oh. Fuck! The fighting swept back and look forth. At, look at the fucking chaos! <laughs> if you were. Uh, if you were the camera that is looking right now through all of this, what would you do? I don't know. <laughs> I, I think in, in that mess, the war doesn't even matter. Whose side are you even fighting if you can't see your men or the enemies? Uh, you know, it, you, it's a mess. You know, I guess you would like try to use your, uh, you know, like um, the, the this thing. What is it called? What is it? I forgot its name. Uh, whatever. Uh, the... Uh, I forgot, but if, you, if you're going to use that, you can use that to maintain distance between you and your enemies and kill some enemies too. But there's enemies on the ground, there's e your people might be dying, and you might be the cause of your people's death too. And who knows, man, it's a mess. Do you, uh, you have to have a good eyesight and you have to have extremely good training to deal with these uh, combat situations or else you will not survive. Like, seriously, look at this shit. Wow. Through the village, the streets filling with dead and wounded from both sides. Hmm. But as Russian and Prussian guard regiments arrived to reinforce the village... Oh, look at this guy. <laughs> this guy was using the, uh, the, bl the fucking gun as a, like, a stick. Holy shit. The French <laughs> were forced to fall back. I mean, that would do some really good damage. I mean, that's the stock, man. That's most of the wood there. And you would fucking beat the shit out of you. <laughs> you, 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 can, uh, you can break a skull with that. Definitely. Around 4 p.m., mm. the Austrian Reserve Corps finally arrived huh. and renewed the assault on Markleberg, one of the okay. morning's objectives, which was finally secured. Okay. All right. By 5 p.m., uh, it was... The French are not able to stand on their ground. They're, they're having to... Uh, you know, take a step back a little bit, and this is not helping. I don't know. It was clear that Napoleon didn't have enough reserves to force a decisive outcome in the south. Shit. To the north, Merkern was being stubbornly held by French marines with lethal close-range artillery support. Hmm. But despite terrible losses, York's Prussian Corps continued to attack. Oh, God! Marshal Marmont himself was wounded twice but remained oh, in command. Shit. Finally, wow. a brilliant charge by Prussian hussars triggered oh. a French rout. Oh shit! Merkern fell oh. as Marmont's corps streamed back towards Leipzig. Oh my god! There's one French artillery. <laughs> it's, it's still there. They lost that one. But these people actually fucking charged with no fear and, and made the French run. Holy shit, that's actually brilliant, I agree. Fuck. As dusk fell around 6 p.m., hmm. fighting died out across the battlefield. Huh. The first day of the battle had cost the French an estimated 25,000 casualties. Oh! The coalition, at least 30,000. Oh, fuck. Napoleon had come close but failed to land a decisive blow. Oh man, this is like really making Napoleon like, is he even a legend? Like, what the fuck? Like, he's not even, he's not able to uh, make a stand. He's not able to dominate in any way or form, man. I don't know. If I was Napoleon, I would be like, what is, is something wrong with me? What is wrong with me? That's what I would be thinking. Holy shit. Man. The chance for victory was slipping from his grasp. Yeah. 
It is slipping. I think it it probably slipped away a long time ago. All right, whatever. Um, you know, eight corps have lost a third of their men and many officers. All ammunition stocks have been used up. We have not enough to maintain combat for one hour. Oh shit! Marshal uh, Poniatowski um, reported the end of the day, end of day one. Man, they don't have enough ammunition, or you know, it's. <laughs> Even for one hour? Oh god, third of their men and many officers. All the ammunition has been used up. That is a grave concern. Man, if I was getting close to not having any ammunition, I would, I don't know, try to retreat. Why, why am I using up all my ammunition? That would be another thing that I have to note it down every time I go into these wars, you know? Dang! Only for, not even for one hour. <laughs> Day two, Battle of Leipzig. Fuck, this is, uh, this is really, uh, like, like, really evil and fucked up, man. Something terrible. I hope nothing ha happens to, like, um, like, I don't want Napoleon to lose that many troops, you know? I don't know. This is a, this is proving to be another failure. Sunday, the 17th of October, brought a lull with both armies exhausted by the previous day's fighting. Oh man, yeah, one whole day of fucking running over each other, fucking shooting, killing, stabbing. It's not gonna be, like, you cannot do that for a whole day, let alone, it's, it's just not gonna work, man. You, you're gonna be tired the next day, obviously. And, and depending on who takes the, um, the lead, is the one who actually probably wins in, in these kinds of, uh, you know, wars. Jeez. Napoleon needed to rest his troops and resupply them with ammunition, which was yeah. running dangerously low. Oh my god! He also this is making me kinda, like, tensed. I I'm, I'm in tension right now. <laughs> I feel the tension and, and I'm, my, my hands are, my palms are getting sweaty. Fuck. He sent a message to his father-in-law, hmm. Emperor Francis I, suggesting an armistice and mm. finally offering concessions. Okay. But the Allies were no longer interested. Oh. They knew time was on their side. Fuck. The only uh. major combat that day occurred in the north, where Blücher continued to attack. Oh, Russian infantry no. stormed Eutrich and Gorlis. Oh, God. Russian hussars charged and routed part of Arigi's 3rd Cavalry Corps. Holy shit. It's almost like they saw some weakness of Napoleon and now they don't even give a fuck and they just wanna fucking kill Napoleon and just 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 uh, end the day with it and 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 move on you know <laughs> that's what they want to do they're tired of this and and they are like fuck Napoleon just just kill him you know that's what they're like holy shit they they're not stopping anywhere they're not retreating they're making the french retreat so hard i'm like shocked <laughs> that day, Napoleon received 14,000 reinforcements when Rainier's French Saxon 7th Corps arrived from the northeast. Hmm. But the same day, the coalition received more than 100,000 reinforcements oh. as their armies continued to converge on Leipzig. Oh, Colorado's shit. Austrian 1st Corps, hmm. Bennigsen's Army of Poland. Huh and Bernadotte's Army of the North, though the latter was widely criticized. That's a lot of people, man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think, now, now I think like Napoleon is completely lost now. There's just too many enemies, my God. For his leisurely march to the battlefield. The next day, Napoleon would face odds of nearly two to one. Oh man. It was time for the Emperor to begin planning his retreat. Yeah, he's getting overcrowded and he needs to just leave at this point. This is, it's like, it's like a, a stone in a pot full of water. The water is the enemy, the stone is Napoleon, basically. That's how fucked up. Look at this shit. It's covered with enemies and he's, he's like a small area. <laughs> Come on. He doesn't have a chance up here. Alright. Alright, uh, who said this?
ओके आई राइट टू यू ऑन द मॉर्निंग ऑफ द बैटल द लाइक ऑफ विच हैज स्केयरसली बिन सीन इन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ द वर्ल्ड वी हैव सराउंडेड द फ्रेंच एम्पर दिस बैटल विल डिसाइड द फेट ऑफ यूरोप जनरल वॉन निजिनो लेटर टू हिज वाइफ ही इज लाइक हैप्पीली राइटिंग अ लेटर टू हिज वाइफ ही डज नी ही इज लाइक सो चिल ओके एटीन अक्टूबर मैन दिस इज इनसेन ओके yeah they he's celebrating that the french have been uh, basically surrounded and he uh, killing the french or and the napoleon will be uh, deciding the fate of europe basically fuck he's not, he's not even worried he's writing letter to letters to his wife like what the hell <laughs> oh battle of leipzig day 3 every day is more loss and more ruin and more you know like like failure shit on monday morning the sun shone across 40 square miles of battlefield huh. on which nearly half a million troops and oh. 2000 cannon were assembled oh my so god soldiers from france germany russia oh, austria poland italy sweden the netherlands and even britain Oh man this was truly the battle of the nations. Yeah everybody's here man this is like uh, the greatest crossover ever like that Avengers meme you know like Avengers everybody's here holy shit <laughs> The greatest crossover never exist that's what I'm going to title this video because that's so cool I love it okay <laughs> In preparation for his withdrawal, Napoleon pulled back his forces into a tighter defensive perimeter. Oh shit. And ordered Bertrand's 4th Corps to march west to secure the army's line of retreat. Fuck, every every nation like is here ready to battle and everybody has their own plans and they're engaging in some kind of strategy. It's insane. Two divisions of the Young Guard under Marshal Mortier took their place at Lindenau. Schwarzenberg <laughs> meanwhile planned to close the net on Napoleon with six converging attacks. Oh shit. What the fuck? <laughs> nah, Napoleon, man, what are you planning? Tell me your plan now because this is going to be really bad for you. Holy shit, six way attacks. Fighting in the south began around 8 a.m. 8 a.m. The Austrians took Dörlitz, but Marshal Udino led a counterattack at the head of a young guard division and oh, drove man. them out again. Oh shit! Run, bitch! Schwarzenberg <laughs> was so alarmed by this reverse that he sent orders to recall Gulai's Third Corps. Wow! General Barclay's oh, troops initially faced little opposition as okay. they took Wachau. and Liebert Volkwitz scenes of such oh. bitter fighting two days before but yeah. now there, there was nobody there so there it was free real estate they they came in and took everything <laughs> this is ridiculous they defended oh. Barclay then paused waiting for Benningson to get into position on his right before continuing his attack okay shit Benningson's troops had more ground to cover but towards noon they driven back macdonald's infantry and taken their objectives whoa oh they would man. now wait for bernadotte's army to link up on their right yeah but the, the the french army is getting compacted it's like what the hell it's like you you're literally forcing them to fucking uh you know just 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 get stuck together and just 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 it's it's like it's like It's like on one place and they're never going to be able to escape. Basically you're going to fucking kill them if they get close to each other and don't hold any land to make a stand against the enemies. That's exactly what's happening. Holy shit. Wow. But the army of the north was again making slow progress. Huh. For which many again blamed its commander, who oh. seemed exceedingly cautious about facing his old master in battle. Oh shit. Lucher in contrast did not hesitate to launch Russian infantry against Leipzig's northern defenses. Oh man. Their attack failed with heavy losses. Oh shit. Wow. This is literally this is really this it's really a a battle of the nations. Everybody's fighting and and 
it's like multiple strategies happening in one side, one place, and and we we can't even understand what's happening. That's how complicated this war is. Like holy shit, I would be worried for the troops. How are they gonna fucking maintain their their uh, you know their position? Because it's it's gonna be super messy. Holy shit. All right. All right. If all were demoralized and he appeared, his presence was like an electric shock. All shouted, We will the emperor! And everybody, everyone charged blindly into the fire. <laughs> uh, Sergeant Major John, Johan Rohrig, French Voltigier at Leipzig. Holy shit. Okay, if all were demoralized and he appeared, his presence was like an electric shock. All shouted, Damn, son, is he talking about Napoleon? If he appears, everybody's gonna be electric shocked and, and inspired at once to make a stand, you know? But uh, we're gonna see. Wow! <laughs> By 2 p.m., Napoleon was hard pressed on all fronts. Huh. But holding his own. Isn't it crazy that the the morale and the um, the the spirit of the troops matters so much in in war? Like seriously, like if you don't believe that you're gonna that you're gonna win or you want to win, if you don't have any motivation, if you don't believe, then you're gonna lose, and you will know that you're gonna lose, and you you'll be afraid of it. Okay, and and it's like your feelings are connected to this war, to any war that you engage in, you know, to, to, to your formations, to, to your fellow troops, to your leaders. That is actually fucking so deep if you think about it. Man, fuck. And, and real life, like every day, forget the wars, the outside life, the city life, the world, the, the, the normal life of everybody else that work hard, you know, if they don't stand up and, and, and succeed, then they will fail in life as well. It's like that. It, it, it's, it matters what you feel, what you think, what is right and how brave you are. It, it obviously matters. And this here is the lesson. Holy shit. Man. His attention was now focused on Probst Haider, okay. key to his southern front, under attack from Kleist's Prussian second corps. Probst Haider. Okay. French troops had turned the village into a fortress Oh. And inflicted terrible losses on the advancing Prussians. Shit! Probst Haider was soon engulfed in smoke and fire oh, as fighting man. raged on all sides. I don't think you can even go in there anymore. It's completely covered with fire. Look at that shit. <laughs> wow, it's called Probst Haider. I don't know what that means, but damn, I like that name. Okay. Some Prussian regiments lost half their men attacking the village. Oh. Well, three French generals were killed as they organized oh, its defense. Oh my God! In order to stay, to make a defense in that village, they sacrificed their lives. And these, these were generals. Holy shit! Uh, that's a serious loss. Napoleon even sent in Friant's division of the guard hmm. to reinforce the position. Okay. Come on! I'm gonna have to do it. To the north. Bernadotte's army was finally joining the battle in earnest. Okay. Marmont had assembled 137 guns around Schoenefeld, hmm. which poured fire into the Russian ranks. Okay. In response, Bernadotte massed 200 guns of his own. Oh shit! Oh man, was... look at this, this is what I was talking about, look at the, this whole thing. This is what they, I think they showed us at the end of that Battle of Leipzig video. And it looked like planet warfare. You can't see any patch of grass anywhere that is empty. Maybe here. But um, it's filled with war. And holy shit. I don't think if you run, even if you run for acres and acres and acres to escape this war, you won't be able to escape. It's death. You might as well uh, dig yourself a hole in the ground and... and basically make yourself a grave and sleep in there and cover yourself with the mud basically what that spongebob meme exactly soon but, strewn with the dead and wounded yeah as the sheer weight of fire made it impossible for either side to advance oh god <laughs> oh shit around 3 p.m 
von Bülow's Prussian Corps, supported by Austrian Jaegers and its small British rocket detachment, attacked Paunsdorf. No oh, man! Grenier's 7th Corps could not withstand the onslaught. Hmm. An hour later, around 3,000 Saxon soldiers rushed hmm. over to the enemy and surrendered. Oh shit! Okay. The Saxons were deeply disillusioned with their French allies. Huh. Their main wish now was for a quick end to a war that had ravaged their homeland for many months. Oh shit, they were like, I guess they were like demoralized. They couldn't stand all these months of fucking torture. And they just wanted it to end and they just surrendered, bruh. Wow, man. Yeah, war can do that to you. Fuck. The hole in the line... I can totally imagine that. Seriously. ...created by the Saxons' defection was soon plugged by guard cavalry. Okay. But the coalition juggernaut could not be stopped. Oh, shit! Towards dusk, under relentless Russian pressure, Marmont huh. abandoned the burning ruins of Schoenefeld, oh. while the Prussians took Sellerhausen. Oh man, the enemies are closing in! Do something, bro! What the hell? <laughs> you just keep gonna going back and then, you know, fucking get compacted into within your own troops? What's going on? That will kill you! Uh, make a stand somewhere and, and keep that stand alive till the day you die, I guess. Come on! In the south, Probst Haida still held, hmm. but the situation was grim for Napoleon. Oh my god! The third day's oh, fighting shit. cost both sides another 25,000 casualties. Oh God! Napoleon, look at this mess, bro! <laughs> Holy shit! Imagine being in the middle of that. Oh man, I would be like, "Holy sh!" I would, I would just basically sleep, and and people would probably think of me as some dead body, and I might have some people, uh, you know, stomping on me. To, to move past me and shit, but still, like, I'd rather sleep there. I don't know. Uh, or maybe, you know what, if I was trained, I wouldn't be sleeping. I would be actually fighting there. So that's good. Napoleon's army was exhausted, outnumbered, virtually encircled, hmm. and critically low on ammunition. Oh my god. Finally, the Emperor gave the order to retreat. Oh shit! How are you gonna retreat amongst in in that all that mess? I don't think you can uh, even find your own troops to retreat uh, together and shit like that. So I don't know, man. The people that are in there, if any one of our troops are in there, they're dead. End of story. Shit, they will never be able to get out of it. <laughs> okay, uh, sire, we will hold on. We are all ready to die for your maj Majesty. Okay, wow, uh, Marshal Poniatowski to Napoleon on receiving orders uh, to form a rear guard. Damn, this man is ready to, this man and all the troops are ready to give their life for him. What a great inspirational, sire, we will hold on. We are all ready to die for your majesty. What a great, great. This is what we need. Don't, re don't retreat, stand, make a stand. Fight back, bro. Oh, the Battle of Leipzig, day four. Oh, the hell is hell is getting closer and closer every day. Shit. <laughs> Overnight, under cover of darkness and early morning fog, hmm. the French army withdrew behind Leipzig's walls. Okay. And at 4 a.m. began its retreat west, crossing the single bridge over the Elster River that led hmm. back to France. Oh man. There's been time and material. I'm glad that there was a village where they could just stay in and make a, a, a peaceful retreat, you know, because if, if it was, if this, these lands, if these lands were completely empty, I think the, the French would completely get ev eviscerated, completely killed, you know, Napoleon could have died there, you know, fuck, I'm glad that the Leipzig uh, town, that village or city, whatever it is, exists because holy shit. I, Napoleon could have died, bro. Seriously. Materials to build extra bridges, but in what would prove a serious oversight, no one had given the necessary orders. Oh. Furthermore, there was no clear plan for Leipzig's defense, which was left to a jumble of understrength units, mostly oh. Poles and Germans. 
Napoleon left Leipzig around 10am. Oh. Behind him there were scenes of mounting chaos and confusion. Oh, the city's man. streets jammed with troops, guns and wagons. Hmm. The 20,000 wow. wounded troops in the city had little hope of escape. Yeah, may they knew that they were gonna die right there. And if they stay alive, the enemy is gonna come and finish the deed and kill them and shit. So they they knew they, their fate was sealed there. Holy fuck, man. 30 minutes later, shells began to rain on the city. Oh, the now the enemies are not taking, they're not gonna wait any longer. They're tired. Let's just fucking go and kill this bitch. And that's what they're doing. And Napoleon is already on his way. <laughs> oh man. What about the other ones? Are they gonna leave or not? They have to. There's no way, man. Coalition launched an all out assault from oh. north, east, oh, and south. Oh man. Fuck! The rear guard held the city's gates for as long as they could. Oh god. But they were soon overwhelmed by the enemy. And savage street fighting broke out across the city. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh god! A bar. Dude, this gave me chills, bro. That music and everything. It really feels like the end. Holy shit! packed with gunpowder had been moored beneath the Elster Bridge. Good planning! So that it could be quickly destroyed after the rear guard crossed. Good! Around 2 p.m., a corporal lit the fuse when he saw oh, Russian God. soldiers on the far bank. Oh, God! Even though the bridge was still packed with troops, oh. wagons, and horses. No! No! The bridge Holy was shit. destroyed in a gigantic explosion that what? trapped 30,000 men and 30 generals on the wrong side of the river. Holy shit! Panic broke out among those who suddenly found themselves cut off. Oh my god! Most became prisoners, but some tried to swim for it. Oh including god! Including the Polish Prince Poniatowski, made a marshal by Napoleon just three days before. Oh my god! Weak from his wounds, he rode his horse into the river. But Holy as it tried to shit. climb the steep far bank, it rolled over him, and he was drowned. Oh my god! Marshal MacDonald had Wait, also... Wait, what? As it tried to climb the steep far bank, it rolled over him, <laughs> and he was drowned. Oh! Ah. Marshal MacDonald had also been cut off by the blast. What the fuck? resolved to escape or die trying. Oh God! He found a place where engineers had cut down two trees as a makeshift bridge, oh, and shit. made his attempt. Oh man! And there I was, one foot on either trunk, and the abyss below me. Dude. The high wind was blowing. I was wearing a large cloak, and fearing that someone would grab at it, I got rid oh, of it. Oh my God! I was already three quarters of the way across when some men decided to follow me. Their unsteady feet caused the trunks oh, to shit. shake, and I fell into the water. No! Fortunately, I could touch the bottom, but the bank was steep, the soil loose and slippery. Oh God! Some of the enemy's skirmishers came up. They fired at me point blank. Oh God! And missed me, and some Whoa. of our men who happened to be nearby drove them off and helped me out. Oh man! I was wet from head to foot, breathless and sweating heavily from my efforts. Oh my God! Marshal Marmont, who had got across early in the day, gave me a horse. I wanted oh. dry clothes more, but they were not to be had. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> dry the clothes. The bridge turned what was already a heavy defeat for Napoleon into oh, a disastrous shit. one. Oh my God! Later that day, dude, this video blew my fucking mind. Oh my God! What? This is insane. This is probably the most insane moment I've seen in this whole fucking playlist. In this whole, all the videos I've been reacting, this is the greatest shit I've ever seen. Like, it's so, it's so messy. So messy that it will blow your mind. Fuck. Day, the three allied monarchs. I hope the people that were left behind made it across the river and, and were able to s save themselves. I hope because this... Uh, this is not their intention. This is not what they wanted, man. I feel bad for them, bro. ...at in the center of Leipzig to celebrate their great victory. 
Oh shit! It had come at enormous cost. Exact numbers are impossible to establish, but wow. in four days fighting, the coalition armies suffered at least 52,000 casualties. Oh my god! Napoleon, who could- that, That's a decent sized uh, army! <laughs> what?! Could less afford such losses, came off worse. 47,000 oh killed and wounded, 35,000 taken prisoner. 35,000 because of that uh, blowing of that fucking bridge. And, and that bridge, that explosion of that bridge across that river kind of reminded me of uh, the good, the bad, the ugly. You remember that Western movie uh, where they, you know, the hero, the protagonists go around and uh, tie up dynamite and then they go hide and then boom. You know, that it reminded me like, like a real, like, a, like that scene, that explosive, like explosion of, of that bridge. Every shit, like things can hit your head and it did in the... It didn't, so <laughs> they survived. It's like that. Fuck. 325. 35,000 prisoners? I don't think I've ever seen that many prisoners. And and it's all because of that 2 p.m. bomb blast at the fucking bridge. That motherfucker did, got scared and blew it up. I can't believe this shit. He could have waited for, uh, probably for another half an hour. And these motherfuckers would probably cross it, but... He was so scared that he lit the fire, and it's like... What? Guns lost. Oh my More god! More men were killed and wounded at Leipzig than in any European battle before the First World War. Oh my god! Sir George Jackson, the British ambassador to Austria, rode over the battlefield with Metternich, the Austrian oh. foreign minister. The, the most amount of people that were killed before World War was here. Holy shit, I can't, I can't even, like, I, I can't believe this. That's insane. Two days later. Huh. A more revolting and sickening spectacle I never beheld, he wrote. Oh, shit. Scarcely could we move forward a step without passing over the dead body of some poor fellow. Oh, God. Gashed with wounds and clotted with blood. Oh, God. Another, perhaps, without an arm or a leg. Oh, my God. Here and there, a headless trunk or a head only which caused oh. our horses to stumble or start aside. Oh my God! It made one's blood run cold. This, the death is so hard that even like horses were scared of going through there. Holy shit, you would just find random heads or bodies without heads. Oh my God. Some limbs somewhere else. You look around, you look around, you look underneath your foot, there's a leg, somebody's leg. We don't know whose leg it is, it's there. <laughs> oh my, man. This video is the greatest video I've ever seen. <laughs> this thing is the most, it, it will blow your mind. Holy shit. To glance upon the upturned faces of the dead. Hmm. We got over this field of glory as quickly as we could. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> oh fuck. All Europe was marching with us just a year ago. Today, all Europe is marching against us. Napoleon to, se to the Senate. Paris, 14 November, 1813. I hope Napoleon does something, man. This is not, this is not going good. And like, I feel like we're at the end of this playlist almost. And I'm like, what the hell? You know? Is this going to be the end? Like, it's going to be tra It's going to be Napoleon failing over and over till the end. I hope not. You know, I want him to win at least once before this whole thing ends, you know. <laughs> Napoleon had suffered a calamitous defeat. Huh. He had lost the battle for Germany. Oh, His man. domination of Europe appeared at an end. Otherwise, he would have, uh, like, fucking uh, dominated the entirety of Europe. And he would be the greatest leader ever born. You know? But, man. <laughs> holy shit. Of course, the Russians didn't let that happen. And, you know, the French have, like, different culture. The French are of different culture. They're from France. And the Russians would not be okay with that. Um, even if Napoleon won, they wouldn't be okay with that. Just like how it was in Spain. The Spanish people never 
they never accepted Napoleon like the uh, the French invasion. They never accepted that. They actually retaliated against by torturing and killing with their 6,000 troops, special troops and shit. So it's never going to be good, you know. It's never going to be accepted um, unless you're going to like social engineer them into accepting um, you know, standing the test of time by not letting them win over you even after taking over, you know, Russia and everything, you know. Jeez. Wow. This is insane. With 80,000 survivors, he began a fighting retreat to the French border. Now he's, he's fighting to get, get away from all of that. That's how messed up it is. There was now no chance of rescue for the 100,000 men trapped in garrisons across Germany and Poland. Oh my some God! some held out for another five months. Oh shit, they, hold, they held out for another five months hoping for Napoleon to save them, you know? How are they gonna get out of there? They're, they're fucking done, 100,000? That's insane. That's a death sentence, man. I would like go to the other side. Um, whatever's on the other side of Russia, go there. Save yourself. Or maybe there's like fucking, uh, look at this. There's like lakes and oceans and shit. Go in there. Save yourself. Just jump into it. Grab a boat or something. Get yourself in there, you know, and escape fast because holy shit. Make as much of a bigger journey as you can possible to get back to France. Do a U-turn here, get back there. Holy shit. Marshal <laughs> Murat took his leave of the Emperor, assuring him of his loyalty, but secretly planning to cut a deal with the Allies to save his throne in Naples. Why? It was the last time the two men saw each other. Oh my god. Eleven day Fucking backstabbers everywhere, man. This is politics, you know? You cannot trust anybody. Whoever's loyal with you, the fact that they're even with you is like l fucking like a god's gift, you know? Because they will fucking stab you if it means to save their life or um, give them more power and shit like that. They will fucking flip their fucking side in a second, you know? Jeez. Days after the Battle of Leipzig, Napoleon's former allies, the Bavarians, tried oh. to block his escape at Hanau oh, with 40,000 men. Oh my god! Holy shit! The Bavarian commander, von Freda, had served with Napoleon in many campaigns. But on seeing his deployment for battle, oh god. Napoleon remarked, I made him a count, but I couldn't make him a general. Oh man. The French Emperor then ordered the Imperial Guard to lead an attack that forced the enemy to fall back in disarray. Oh man. This is so fucking frustrating. How the fuck? Even while escaping, he gets stopped and it's a fucking battle. Holy shit. The French army reached the safety of Mainz three days later. Huh. Napoleon himself pushed on to Paris to huh. contain the political damage from his defeat. Oh my God! Behind him, his empire was being dismantled. Oh God! On the 4th of November, the coalition announced the dissolution of the Confederation of the Rhine, hmm. several of its former members now joining the war against France. Oh man! In the Illyrian provinces... Even their own, like, even France, they're not leaving him alone. Holy shit. Local revolts, Austrian invasion, and British naval support brought an end to French rule. Oh, God. In North Italy, Eugène was retreating steadily before the advance of von Hiller's Austrian army. Hmm. While in Hamburg, Marshal Davout, with 34,000 troops, would soon be cut off and under siege. Oh, God. Napoleon's situation was desperate. Oh, man. But in the next campaign, oh, God. fought for France itself, oh. Napoleon would prove that he was still the master of war. Exactly! Yeah! <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Thank you to all our Patreon supporters for making this series possible. Holy shit. And to Great Courses Plus, for sponsoring this video. Visit our <laughs> Patreon page to find out how you too can support the channel, I... get ad-free early access, hmm. and help to choose future topics.
All right. Uh, go check out his Patreon. Pay to him because I want more of these videos. I hope he makes more. These are like three years old, two years old. It's crazy. And this this guy is like crazy. Okay. Go subscribe to him on a uh, YouTube channel. He just reached 2 million subscribers. I've been seeing him like 1.99 million subscribers since the beginning of this playlist reaction that I've been doing, you know. But like in the previous video, he reached 2 million. And I was like, I congratulated him. So go check him out on YouTube as well. Subscribe to him. Uh, re make him reach 2.1 million subscribers or something. Just do it. He deserves it. And holy shit, what a video, man. What the hell? Wow, this video fucking blew my mind. <laughs> and the reaction has been like one hour and stretching. I gotta end this video. But man, my, 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 my mind is blown with what just happened there. In Leipzig... And all them people dying, it's like, wow. This video will blow anybody's mind out there, I guarantee. Like, holy shit. And I hope you enjoyed this. And I hope your mind was blown, okay? So please make sure to uh, subscribe to this channel. It's my backup channel. This is where I upload like three videos a day. But today I'm up uploading two videos here because I'm also uploading two videos on my main channel. Go check out my main channel. The link will be in the description. Um, go check it out. If you like it over there, subscribe over there. If you like this reaction, subscribe over here. Subscribe to both my channels. Show me support. There's nothing wrong with getting entertained, okay? So please make sure to subscribe to both my channels. And tomorrow is like the weekend, so I won't be able to upload any videos. But this massive reaction one hour worth is gonna satisfy you okay so please make sure to uh subscribe to both my channels don't miss out on my content and um you know i'm starting like a new teenage mutant ninja turtles uh show reaction on my main channel and um it's i hope it's gonna be fucking awesome for you guys and uh, go check it out uh, you know, I'm gonna be reacting to that. If you're seeing this video, it's probably there already. So go check it out and uh, subscribe to both my channels. And what the hell? What? This was a fucking mess. Another defeat for Napoleon. Come on, come on. But apparently, the next war is when is where he sh he proves himself to be the master of war. He's a fucking. He's he's not taking anymore. He wants blood. Okay. He wants blood and he's gonna take it okay so can't wait for the next video i want napoleon to fucking wreak havoc and win and win okay so please make sure to uh, subscribe to both my channels and uh, please suggest me more videos any pol political videos historical videos anything that you're interested in anything that can get me a lot of views and um that can get you to end I hope I can entertain you more. So please, please suggest me more. Okay? I'll, I'll note it down and react to it. I'll even say your name. Okay? So Napoleon's 1813 Battle of the Nations. The greatest crossover existed back in the Napoleon era. Okay? But the Battle of the Nations. Holy shit. This, this video will blow your mind. Okay? So, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this. Please make sure to subscribe to both my channels. And I'll see you guys on Monday. And happy weekend. Enjoy your weekend with your family. Go play some games with your family. Go out there. Go watch movies with your family. That would be amazing. Go check it out. Okay? And I'll see you guys later. Please make sure to subscribe to both my channels. Goodbye. <laughs>